you guys out there in the third dimension with your smart devices, you can really exercise your thumbs on this show. Good morning, I'm Gary. This is my wife, Gloria. Hello, everybody. It might be good evening where you are. <laughs> and this, we're Grace Faith Christian Discipleship, and this is the GFCD Q&A Bible Study. Mm -hmm. And on the screen with us, we've got all these smiling faces. They're, they're our ministry team from the USA. And we will start with ladies first. Um, over to you, please, Cherry, to introduce yourself to the people out there in the third dimension. Yes, I'm Cherry Tall, and I'm from um, Greensboro, North Carolina. Thanks, Cherry. Lovely. Great to have you with yes. us. And Fred, could you introduce yourself, please? And tell us a little bit about your ministry, please, Fred. Okay. Um, my name's Fred Hughes. Um, I had, uh, we do, like um, Gary mentioned, we do the Fred, the Fred Hughes show. <laughs> so you can get it, you can find that just almost anywhere across uh, all of the podcast uh, places and uh, and then we go live uh, live stream uh, four different locations. And so it it's kind of it, we've been doing this for about four years. So it's kind of good to have all kinds of interesting characters on. It's good. And uh, we've just uh, we just love the Lord. We love to get people that uh, have a relationship with God on and just talk about Jesus, open the Bible wherever they want to go. I let the preachers preach and the teachers teach and the ones that are scared to death of the whole thing, you know, I'll, I'll lead them through with uh, doing an interview or something. But uh, we've had a lot of fun with it over the years. It certainly is. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I live in Texas, by the way. Yeah, Amarillo, isn't it, Fred? Amarillo, Texas. We yeah. moved, yeah. moved a long, long way from uh, Dumas to Amarillo, which is about 60 miles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, thanks, Fred. Great to have you with us too. And over to you, Emmanuel, to introduce yourself. And don't forget to tell us about your ministry. Praise God. Yeah, my name is Emmanuel Gentle, and I'm in Colorado Springs. And my ministry is on Facebook. So you just follow me on Facebook and you see me, yes. you know, give a word here and there. That's what we do. <laughs> a powerful word is that. He's Let being, me say. Praise God. He's being very modest. He was very, a, a very... guest speaker in South Africa just recently at a four-day yeah. conference. So, yeah. yeah. A very <laughs> extremely powerful mm -hmm. um, word mm -hmm. through this man. As mm -hmm. you'll pick up from all the speakers yes. on this ministry team, mm -hmm. right now I'm going to invite my wife, Gloria, to open this Bible study with prayer mm -hmm. and to lead us through communion. Mm, I will. And uh, just so that you don't, that, that everyone else out there knows they can probably tell from our accent we are in australia on the east coast in a little town little city i suppose you'd say called ipswich and uh we like to start with communion so if you haven't got the elements that represent the bread and the wine go and get something i'm sure you've got something in your kitchen come back and join us and fellowship with us while Proper. i open in prayer Father God, we just thank you for this precious time mm. and we thank you especially for the ministers who have given their time to come and be a part of this Bible study. We thank you that this uh, Bible study goes out into the world and reaches people's people whose hearts are hungry to know you, to rightly divide the word of truth, to see uh, and hear revelation um, from the word. And we thank you, Father God, that these people are being drawn by the Holy Spirit to, to connect with this Bible study. We thank you for, your, for the Holy Spirit that is in us and helping us, and we thank you for Jesus, the Word, Almighty God, and we open this Bible study in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah, thank you.
I'm just going to continue on with with a bit of a theme that's been on my heart just recently. And it's it's come from um, a few weeks ago when Gary and I went up to a place called Bundaberg, which is about a four hour drive away from us to watch his granddaughters rowing in school statewide competitions. And I was just really impressed with the the young people's dedication, their perseverance. These are these are young people from the age of um, about what fourteen through to eighteen, thereabouts, or mm. maybe even a bit younger, maybe thirteen. And just how mature they all seem to be, because they really are focused on on their sport and putting in the effort to train and parents and families being committed to to going and taking their children all over the state and all over the country even and so that really impressed on me so um at the last bible study i talked about not quitting not quitting when you when you um maybe have a, a a fall down and so again this morning this the theme is there just pick yourself up and carry on if you do have a slip um, or if you, you get a setback like some of these young people didn't get a place in the semis or, um, you know, they they might have had an injury or something that actually put them out of the race, they just didn't quit. They just picked themselves up and they carried on. And that's what we are to do as well as, as Christians in this walk yeah. that we have. We might have people that come against us and sometimes it's people who are closest to us. It might be family that come against us and uh, just pick yourself up and carry on and focus on Jesus because he is really the only answer that this world has. And though they may not understand right now, we pray and believe that one day they will. And so as we come and we take communion, we're, we're declaring what we believe. We are proclaiming who Jesus is in our life and what he has done for us and that he is the risen Lord. And we do this as a family of believers because it's so important for us to fellowship with one another, for encouragement and for us to travel this road together because there will be persecution that comes against us. And as I said, sometimes it's from our very own family. So when I read from... Matthew 26, it says in verse 26, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed or gave thanks and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Thank you, Jesus, for your body that was broken for me, that you took the lashes that paid for my healing and I have the right to walk in divine health because of you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So, Father God, I thank you that you sent your son, Jesus, that he was willing to go to the cross and to shed his blood for the sin of the world that he took my sin. I make it personal to me. Thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice you made and thank you that you are the living, risen Lord. And I praise and thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, almighty God. Mm. Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat> Jesus and thank you Gloria for leading us through communion well this is a Bible study and we've had Kathleen join us so I just invite Kathleen to introduce herself to mm -hmm. you guys out there in the third dimension and what do I mean by third dimension well if this was only a two-dimensional Bible study that then then it would involve only the people 
the faces that you see on the screen, but it doesn't. It involves you. You can ask questions, you can make comments in the comments directly below, and we'd love to see them. At the very least, tell us where you're watching us from in the world. But um, don't just give us a thumbs up. We get heaps of thumbs up because uh, what we need to do is have you make a comment. The comments um, stay with us, but the thumbs up just seem to disappear. Uh, Kathleen, could you introduce yourself to the people in the third dimension and tell us where you're coming from in this world? Well, um, as Gary has said, I'm Kathleen and um, I'm from Bunbury in Western Australia. And so, of course, that's the West Coast of uh, Australia. And we live in a beautiful place, as Gloria said last night, you know, by the ocean. And, you know, we Australians are really blessed. And I was just, before I came on, I was just praying for Israel. Yes, mm. amen. Yes. yes, amen. We just need to be very mindful of what's going on mm. at, in the suffering church mm. and God's people around the world. Mm. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, mm. thank you. Uh, yes. Kathleen, I think it's appropriate. Would you like to lead us mm. as a group of believers um, mm. coming into a prayer of agreement, um, standing with the Lord for Israel? Mm. Could you do that for us, please, Catherine? Yes, Father God in heaven, we just bring the nation of Israel before you. Yes. Yes. You have not taken your hand off your people. Mm. And you've said in your word that the prayers of the righteous avail much. Mm. Yes. And yes. just let them know, Lord, that there are more for them than are against them. Mm -hmm. And that's the scripture that I got. If God be for us, who can be against us? Yes. Yes. And I just thank you, Father, that the nation of Israel and Jesus is coming back. Yes. And he's coming back to Jerusalem. Yes. And he will set his feet on that Mount of Olives. Yes. And we thank you, Father that we know you and the power of your resurrected life. Mm -hmm. And we speak peace, mm -hmm. peace to Israel now in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Yeah, thank you, Kathleen. That was very appropriate at this time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we're doing a Bible study. We're in the Gospels. And, um, and now the overview of the Gospels is is this that the gospels because of prophecy being fulfilled in the gospels it's a real connector to the old testament you see the old testament contains the new testament by way of prophecy but the new testament explains the old testament explains the old testament through the fulfillment of those prophecies it's a lot easier for us born again Christians to look at the fulfilled prophecies because not only are they prophecies fulfilled, but they're also in history mm -hmm. and you can, you can delve into history and you can find the historical records of the fulfillment of those prophecies from the old Testament. You see the Bible, the whole of the Bible is inspired by the Holy spirit. The whole of the Bible is spiritually discerned to somebody who's not a born again Christian it's just goobly goosh but when you are a born again Christian that word of God speaks to your spirit not to your mind but speaks to your spirit right. and confirms things in your spirit another thing that I'll say about the Bible is that None of the verses in the Bible contradict each other. They all corroborate each other. And to, to, to understand that, because you'll, you'll, you'll see something and you'll go, but hang on, this doesn't align with that. And that's where you need to be able to rightly divide the word of truth 
which brings mm. me back to the purpose of this Bible study is to teach you guys out in the third dimension how to rightly divide the word of truth for yourself. Because until you can do that, then I'm sorry to say so, but you'll be babes on milk of the word. It doesn't matter whether you've been a Christian for 10, 20 years or more. If you can't rightly divide the word of truth for yourself, then you are pastor dependent or teacher dependent. And there's a time for that, but there's a time to grow and to mm -hmm. grow up, the word of God says, and to be mature, able to rightly divide the word of truth for yourself. At that time, you'll be Holy Spirit dependent and you will not need that anybody teach you. And I'm quoting the word of God when I say this to you. But let's um, let's just launch straight into this Bible study. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to share screen and we're going to go to Matthew chapter 2, verse mm -hmm. 1. Before we commence the next segment, which is always the highlight of our Bible study, I'd like to pray over your giving today. This prayer comes from 2 Corinthians 9, verses 10 and 11. My God who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberality which causes thanksgiving through us to God. I thank God for your giving. I thank God for those who, on a regular basis, are partnered with GFCD and give monthly. This allows us to keep all our various programs going. Thank you again. God bless you. Now, after Jesus was born in Jerusalem, in Bethlehem of Judea in the day of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Over to you, please, Gloria. Mm, thank you. Um, first, before I make any comment, I just want to let the people out there in the third dimension know that I don't consider myself to be a teacher. I'm just like everyone else who's studying the word. And um, something jumped out at me this morning. Actually, all through my childhood, we hear, or my child, everybody's childhood who, who comes from a Christian family, would hear the story of Christmas. And as a teaching assistant, we used to dress the kids up and we'd have the little story of Christmas with the, the you know, the pretend camels and the, and, and the shepherds and Mary and Joseph, the baby. And there were always these three kings, although it doesn't actually say there were three kings. Anyway, there were kings that came from the East. And somewhere in my little peanut brain, I used to always think, why did the kings come from the East? I couldn't, I couldn't connect kings coming from the east to see the baby Jesus. Well, I was reading, I was, re I was reading this morning and I'm like, I'm, like Andrew Womack says, he's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Well, I'm probably not the sh sharpest knife in the drawer either, but something jumped out at me because in the Bible that I'm reading on my phone, it's also got a, a connected a study book. And highlighted underneath the word the word from in verse one is a little line and i thought i wonder why that's there under the word from it talks about um the the kings coming from the east and this is what it says it cross references this from genesis 25 6 it says but abraham gave gifts to the sons of concubines which Abraham had. I went, what? <laughs> I hadn't picked that up before. And while he was still living, he sent them eastward, away from Isaac, his son, to the country of the east. Now, Isaac was a really rich man. He would have given them gold and uh, animals and not, all kinds not of... Isaac. Not Isaac. Uh, Abraham was a really rich man. He would have given them all kinds of riches. Therefore, if you're, if you're a very rich man, you can be considered a king. And he sent them east. So it's no wonder that these 
uh, kings from the east, when they saw the sign in the sky, because they knew there was going to be a sign um, in uh, in, in 1 Kings 4.30, thus Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the men of, of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. And it talks just down here where it talks about in verse 2, his star. In Numbers, it says, uh, Numbers 24, 7, 17, it says, I see him, but not him, but not now. I behold him but not near, a star shall come out of Jacob, a scepter shall rise out of Israel and batter the bow, brow of Moab and destroys the, the sons of tumult. So uh, in Isaiah 63, it says, the Gentiles shall come to your light, the kings to the brightness of your rising. So they would have known this in the word. They would have read this. They would have been looking for that star. So to me, I know that everybody on the screen probably already knew that. But to me, that was so exciting because now I can connect why the kings from the east went looking for the Messiah. So wow. there you go. That was and my that, little revelation. That was, that was a revelation <laughs> to me. I'd never even thought about it. Over to you, please, Fred. You'll have to unmute Fred. Unmute. Uh, yeah, gr that's great, Gloria. I, th I think that's awesome. Uh, there's, there's so much. I love the depth of the the word, and then you know when you can kind of go and look at some of the historical things, and and that's why the commentaries and some of the some of the things that are available to us you should, you know read the word, but also, you know, sometimes look up the Greek, look up the, uh, look up some of the things, you know, uh, it really enhance what, uh, you know, the meaning of what, what the word is giving us. You know, uh, I think there's one of the things that, that I get out of um, this portion is that uh, I'm, I'm reminded that we're kings and priests. Mm -hmm. And if we and we have to seek out the Lord just like these guys did, and you know I, I believe that the the Lord will give us a sign, just like He gave them a sign to follow, to keep us on the right track, to to take us to where we need to be. And I think that's kind of you know my the, the word says my sheep know my voice, mm. and no other voice will they follow. And and today we by the Holy Spirit are led by that same star, the brightness of his shining in our life. Mm -hmm. So I'm just reminded of the fact that God doesn't forsake us. He sent us the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that Holy Spirit really is that shining star in our life. If we follow, we'll find. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Very Fred. Mm -hmm. That was really good. Mm -hmm. um, over to you, Cherry, please. Uh, well, I have that scripture um I, what jumped out at me was that jesus was born uh and he he was he he, he came on the scene um but then um at the at the and we're getting ready to read into the king herod all of a sudden he became troubled yeah all of a sudden he oh the the real king the real king somebody else is getting attention you see, not King Herod, the 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 real King of Kings. Um, and um, can I share one thing? I uh, Matthew was one of the first Gospels that I read, and um, it means it just really. One of the things that I was so excited about when I first came to know the Lord, I just started in the Gospels, and um, you know, going through the genealogy of of Jesus Christ. And I'm sort of a person that uh, heard something about numbers uh, and biblical numbers. And there's tw uh, 14 generations um, uh, from Babylon and 14 generations, a, a total of, of 28 uh, generations. And I think that's very interesting because the name, the number 28 means complete completion. And this is really written for the Jews. It's written to the Jews. It's written to all people groups, but it's written to the Jews. It's pointed to them. And so um, 
And then also uh, the whole, the Bible, the Matthew has 28 chapters. I think that's a very, a completion, a number of completion, the number 28. So this whole story uh, it has exactly 28, which is the completion. And if it was written to the Jews, even the numbers are pointing to the fact if this is just written to the Jews, it's the, the, even the numbers are, are, are pointing to completion mm. of our Lord, mm. completion of our Lord. Mm. That's That came to me when I first started reading these first two chapters. Mm. So, yep. Very, very good. Yes. Thanks, Cherry. Um, yeah, I, for, I, I neglected to say, I said this last night, that before we do a study on any book of the Bible, we need to have an overview. Um, and Cherry brought out that <clears throat> Matthew was written to the Jews. Well, it was written by a Jew to the Jews, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Matthew, the author of this book, is Matthew Levi. Mm -hmm. Now, in the, in the Gospels, you read about when Jesus came to him and he stayed with him. Um, see, Levi was despised by other Jews because he was a tax collector. So he was working for the, the, the occupiers, the Romans, um, and he was collecting taxes from the Jews. He's a Jew collecting taxes from, do you, can you imagine how much they mm. despised him? Mm. They hated him. Absolutely wow. hated him. And Jesus came along and fellowshiped with him mm. and invited him to become one of the 12 disciples. So mm. that's who the author is here. So just, you know, it's important to know who the author is, who the audience is, Jews, yes, as Cherry pointed out to us, this is ministering to us. It's not just for them, it's to us as well. The other thing that I'll, I'll mention is that the Gospels are in the New Testament. I've already mentioned that they are very, very important with connecting us to the Old Testament because of the fulfillment of prophecy that is recorded in the Gospels. But when you are reading the Gospels, you have to have your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears turned on. You really do. Because as we're reading the Gospels, as when we're reading the epistles, we have to be able to rightly divide law from grace. But hang on, Gary, it's in the New Testament. Isn't it all grace? Nope, not so, not so. You see, Jesus himself forewarned us of this, and I actually, hang on, I should find, find the address. Mm, yeah, Jesus forewarned us of this. It's, it's actually in Matthew, Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Can you look mm -hmm. that up for me, Gloria, and just read Matthew 5, 17 and 18? Mm -hmm. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. Okay. Is that 18 as well? Oh, no. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Okay. So this is actually Jesus forewarning us that a lot of what he was about to say was not grace, that it was actually the law. He said not one jot nor one tittle will pass away until it is all fulfilled. So he was fulfilling the law while concurrently which means at the very same time he was ushering in grace so some of what jesus said i like i think of it this way he was asked questions that really cornered him and he could only answer them as one under the law because he was fulfilling the law he could not deny the law he was fulfilling the law and not one jot or one tittle could pass away until it was fulfilled. In another place, it talks about that which is now passing away. Why? Because it's fulfilled. 
All right. So as born again Christians, when we're studying the word of God in the New Testament, we have to all the time be looking. Is this law or is this grace? Is this law or is this grace? Even, even when it comes to the Lord's Prayer, when Jesus quoted the Lord's Prayer to his disciples, how should we pray? He said, you pray, thy kingdom come. All right, well, after the cross, Jesus' kingdom has come. And where is his kingdom? It's in the hearts of all men and women who have made him Lord. Mm. Amen. So I got so involved in talking about that. Where are we at? Up to Emmanuel. Okay. Over to you, Emmanuel, for <laughs> comment, please. Thank you. Yes. So, and Gary, that was good. I was going to talk about uh, the first, the, the second verse that says that where is he that is born king? Uh, this man is just born like, who knows, a year ago or six months, maybe two years ago maximum. But he was born king, mm -hmm. not somebody born here that's about to take over some kind of kingdom. He was already king. Now, when you read John chapter 18 verse 36, I think. Let's go to 1836, and you will see that Jesus himself says, I want to be sure of the address. I think it's John chapter 18. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He says, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. So what I'm trying to point out is, Jesus was a king when he was born. He was not somebody born here waiting to become king. Maybe mm. after Herod passed, passes away or something. But what we have to understand is that the kingdom where he was king was not the kingdom of this world. Jesus was the king up in the kingdom of God before he came down here. It is very important for us to see that. So when you become a Christian, you are trying to be part of a kingdom that already existed in heaven. Mm. That kingdom is what Jesus also prayed and say, said, that kingdom come here on earth. So right now we here, we are part of the kingdom of God. One time I remember Gary saying there are two kinds of people in this world. Those who are in the kingdom of God where Jesus Christ is king and those who are in the kingdoms of this world, so many kingdoms. Now, if you lived in Israel at that time, Herod would be your king. But if we lived in Israel together with you, we would still recognize Herod as a king of the land. But our main kingdom, our main kingdom, where Jesus is the king, is the kingdom of God. That's what I wanted to bring out so that we know that we are of different generation different creed different kind of people a royal priesthood mm -hmm. we are not mm -hmm. part of this world altogether and we have something that the people of the world need it brings out the confidence in us we have something that they need they, anything we say from here the whole creation is waiting for the manifestation of the children of god we have something that they need mm -hmm. what are you gary that is excellent wow wow Wow, wow, wow. How good was that? Yeah. Over to you, please, uh, Kathleen, okay. and you'll have to unmute. Well, um, I just want to bring out uh, what it's following on, really, from where Emmanuel just was speaking. Now, the New King James says, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea in the days of Herod, the king, the whole wise men came from the east, came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And um, as Gloria was bringing out that point, they knew 
that he was king of the Jews because they're making that statement. Mm -hmm. But I just want to um, read that in the New Translate, Living Translation said, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived to Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. Now, in Luke chapter 2, there's something uh, in verse 4. I'm going to read it from the um, New Living Translation. says this. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth into Galilee. And then he, we know he took Mary because she was heavily pregnant. But so... What I'm saying here is we had Joseph, who was a descendant of King David, and that's why he went to Bethlehem, because it all fits in. As I've always said before, in the old, it was concealed, and in the new, it's revealed. Mm -hmm. See, what was hidden in the old is now being given we have divine revelation from the spirit of god and the lord showed me something so profound because you see jesus was the child of promise jesus and the lord showed me this morning um in, when I, I am a child of promise too if you are a born-again believer, you are a child of promise. And I always like at least two or three scriptures to back up everything I say. So Romans 9, 8 tells us that. And in Galatians 4, 28, listen to Galatians 4, 28. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise. And Galatians 3.29 says that I am an heir according to promise. I am an heir according to promise. So, you know, um, actually Galatians 3.29 says, and if you be Christ, then you are an heir according to promise. Mm. So this was the child of promise, and they were expecting him. Mm. Just as I said last night, Mary and Joseph knew that in Isaiah 7, 14, unto us a child is born, of the virgin shall bring forth a son. So it's all coming together to reveal to us. And as Gary was saying, Jesus was operating under the old covenant. And he fulfilled everything that the law required. Grace did not come in until the resurrection. And we are born of that self-same spirit that raised him from the dead. That brought about saving grace. I'll leave it there, Gary. Wow. Yeah. Good. How good was two that? Verses. How, how good was that? Just two verses. Um, wow. You know, G, sticking with uh, Matthew, Matthew 4 19, Jesus said, Follow me. Are you a follower of Jesus? Jesus said, Follow me. And he went on and he said, and I will make you fishers of men. So right now I'm going to hand over to Fred to cast that net. Oh, good. Um, there's one little quick thing I want to add, and that is that, that uh, these, the, 
the king and the the wise men and the king both believed <clears throat> the prophecy that had been prophesied they both believed that this was true yeah. so they believed in the word of god and one on an evil end the others on uh, uh, the end of 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 uh, i mean for the purpose of, of discovering you know this this king of kings and you know that is moves us into do you know this king of kings do you actually have relationship with him not do you know about him but do you know him that's a that's a huge discrepancy mm. because it's, the word says that even the de demons knew him knew they they could even quote scripture but the sadducees the pharisees were teachers of the word of and they yet they didn't know him hmm. and so when you go to to the sadducee that came to jesus in the night his name is nicodemus that's in uh john chapter first you know john chapter three and verse very interesting uh three five and seven it's kind of like my 357 i'm fixing to point at you here but, <laughs> that's a but Jackson, verse right three, <laughs> yeah verse three says listen he, he told nicodemus jesus told nicodemus he says you cannot see the kingdom of god unless you become born again and and and, and you know the guy quickly said yeah how can this be and you may be saying that too you know how can this be what what does this mean to be born again well he goes on in verse seven i mean five and he says you cannot enter unless you've been born of spirit and of flesh gary referenced that earlier unless you've been born of the of the flesh unless you have a earth suit then you can't, I mean, you can't get born again if you're not on the planet. <laughs> so you got to be a human being. That's a qualification. And then the next step is if you're born of the spirit. Now that takes on a little bit more than that because we're, we have the spirit. We have a spirit and it can be re, regenerated. And so if, unless you're born of the flesh and of the spirit, you can't, enter the kingdom of God. I, I like this. I th I'd say unless you've been born, if you've been born twice, you're going to, you know, you, you have the, you know, the kingdom, but unless you've been born both of the spirit and of the flesh. Okay. So being born twice is what we want. The, the, and, and that, that means that you're going to only die once. <laughs> oh. But if you die twice, you don't want to get in on that because it says is that the second death is not something we want to get a hold of. So you might be born once and then die twice. That, that's not where you want to be. You want, you know, everybody is born of the flesh or you, like I said, you wouldn't be on the planet but you need to be born of the spirit and so very that very next uh, verse that i skipped down to three five and seven verse seven says jesus said to him don't be surprised i'm telling you you must be born again it's a must if you want to enter if you want to see or you want to enter the kingdom so it's a very powerful presentation that jesus told this teacher of the law and yet, how true it is, how powerful it is. And that's what you need to do right now. If you don't know Jesus, you need to invite him in and, and begin to take fellowship with him, to get to know him. You first get to know him by reading his word. <clears throat> and then you begin to understand. It says, like I said the, uh, earlier, the, the, my sheep know my voice and no other voice will they follow. We began to hear 
based on reading the Word of God, we begin to actually hear the voice of God. And unless you're born again, you really can't fellowship, you can't have this relationship with God. And so that's that's the, the, the powerful part that I'm trying to get to is that you've got to not just know about him, you've got to know him. And once you know him, that kingdom opens up to you. You can both see and hear and enter in mm -hmm. to what God has for you. Mm -hmm. And so if you haven't done that, I want to pray a prayer with you right now. I'm going to give you the opportunity. I'm going to give you an invitation to receive what Jesus has for you, and that is eternal life. Well, you'll only die once. <laughs> so, Father, I just pray right now You just that everybody would just, just uh, that's out there, if anybody doesn't know you, Lord, then I, then I encourage them to receive you in Jesus' mighty name. So pray this prayer with me if that's you. Father, I ask you to receive my repentance. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord, and I want to receive you into my spirit so that I have fellowship with you, so that I know you personally so that I can walk with you and talk with you like Adam did in the very beginning. I want to be restored to the kingdom of God. I want to be born again so that I can see and enter the kingdom of God. If you pray that prayer, if you confess these things, if you confess that just like Nicodemus, you want to enter in, you want to know him, and Father, I just thank you that you bless people, that they come into a closer relationship with you, that they fully understand and know. And if you've already been born again, well, then you can get filled with the Holy Spirit. That's even more good things that you can have. Jesus is, is, a, is a continuous supply that never runs out. And so I just bless anybody that's prayed the prayer and the ones that, that have already prayed that prayer that, Father, we would be, be, become vital members of the kingdom and that we can pray not only to you, but with you by the, by the Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's wonderful. And if you're one of those people that have made that decision right now to invite Jesus into your heart because you believe who he is, in your heart and because you believe that he was risen from the dead then send us an email let us know please email gfcd.sozo that's s-o-z-o at gmail.com and I'll, I'll just invite fred to fred has a uh, a hotline that uh anyone in the u.s can ring uh so if you would like to just give people that number fred if you've made that decision then you can ring and let him know and he'll help you with uh, any resources that you might need or direct you to some place that might be able to help you and disciple you just um, like we are mm. trying to disciple people online. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, Fred. Uh, that number is uh, area code 806-338-2929. Okay. Area code 806-338-2929. 2929 there are uh, people that are on that will be receiving your call they they can speak spanish they can speak english uh, they'd love to pray for you and with you thank you yeah thank you and thank you fred for casting the net now the scriptural basis for the prayer that you just prayed with fred is romans chapter 10 verses yeah. 9 and 10 you might like to jot that down uh, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, very important to know what the, the basis for that prayer is. And if you didn't pray that prayer, but you were feeling the tug of the Holy Spirit, you don't need Fred or any of us to lead you through it. Go to Romans chapter 10, um, verses 9 and 10, and read that and just mm -hmm. pray and ask the Lord. You know, call on the name of the Lord, um, anybody, Shabbos. anyone. So it's whosoever shall call on the name. Of, are you a whosoever? You call on the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. Yes. At that time, the Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ. That's coming into a new family with a, a new um, 
lineage, we only go back one 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 generation, as Kathleen pointed out in last night's Bible study. We go back. We're in the in the in the body of Christ. So that is um, 1 Corinthians 14, 3. Uh, the Holy Spirit baptizes us into the body of Christ. There's actually three baptisms in the Bible. The next one is that Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Spirit, which is what um, Fred spoke of, and that's Luke 3, 16 and John 1, 33. And, of course, the third baptism is men baptising us with water, and that's over in Matthew um, 28, 19. At this point, we've run a little over time, so it's been a great Bible study. We'll definitely be putting this Bible study in the Best Of series, and um, we'll see. I think they all go in the Best Of no, series. They, they don't. They don't. <laughs> we've now got 310 <laughs> Bible studies in our um, 310 in our um, playlist, but we've only got 14 in the Best Of series. So that's yeah. how highly I regard this Bible study because oh, I'm the one that gets to pick which one goes in the Best <laughs> Of. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll see you this guy this time next mm -hmm. week. Just take notice where you're watching us from. We'll be back this time next week for another GFCD Q&A Bible study. Thank you very much, ministers on the screen, for yes. giving up your time and bringing such powerful, powerful revelation yes. um, by the Word of God to us. And yes. uh, you guys out there in, in the third dimension, we we'll love you. you. All. Bless you. <laughs> we'll see week. you next week. Bye. God bless. Bye.